Google has released watermarking for AI, but it's probably not what you think. Plus, let's talk about how it works. If you don't know me, I'm Harper and welcome to Harper Carroll AI. I'm an AI expert with about 10 years of experience in the field. I have two degrees from Stanford in computer science and AI. I was at Meta for four years doing AI and then I was founding engineer and then head of AI at a startup acquired by NVIDIA. Now I teach AI and my goal is to democratize it so that everyone can understand it and use it to their benefit. Let's talk about this new watermarking technology. So first let's talk about the technology. What is it and how does it work? The technology is called Synth ID and it has two main parts. It can add watermarks to generated content and it can detect those watermarks. And it needs to be able to detect those watermarks because they're actually not visible to the human eye. So how does it work? What generative AI models do is they take in massive amounts of data of some form like text or image or audio and then see patterns in that data and then output new text or image or audio based on those patterns. And the way that it recognizes patterns is through creating probability distributions. Let's do an example. Say we have a text generation model and the input is the cat in the. The model is going to have a probability for every word in its vocabulary. And it's probably going to say hat is the most likely word. It's gonna assign that the highest probability. But there are other probabilities. It could be in the bag, or in the litter box. And so what this technology does, this synth ID watermarking technology does, is it takes the probability distribution of the model and shifts it slightly so that the text it generates or the audio it generates or images it generates, the outputs are slightly different than they would have been in the base model. So for example, if you're writing an email, it'll use words that it probably wouldn't have chosen to use, but that are just as good. The watermarking technology doesn't degrade the performance of the model in any way. The model still chooses words that are functional and performant, but they're different. They're slightly different than they would have been. And so in the case of images, it might choose a different color for the pixel or whatever. It's just slightly different. The output is a little bit different than it would have been. And this watermarking technology can check, is that difference different in the same way it would have been if it had this watermark? So is this watermark the reason it is shifted in the way that it shifted? And so that's how it works. So I hope that's clear, and if it's not, let me know in the comments. However, there is a fundamental issue in this technology in that AI companies have to choose to put it in their models. There are two issues with this. One is that even though Google, which made this technology, chose to put it in its generative models and its text and audio and video and image generation models, other companies like OpenAI are probably not gonna choose to put it in their model. And that's because if a customer has a choice between choosing a model that has watermarks in it and one that doesn't, it's probably gonna choose the one that doesn't. And two, even if there were some kind of government law that made it so that all these companies had to put watermarks in their models, people could still get around this. And that's because of open source code. So companies like Meta and some other companies have contributed to open source code, which means the code for these super high performing models like Llama, if you've heard of that, or Mistral, exists online. People can download it, they can run it on their local machines, they can edit the code. They have access to these super powerful models almost as powerful as ones like ChatGPT. I think actually Llama was the first foundational model that outperformed all the existing, even closed source models. So Meta's open source Llama outperformed all the existing models, including the ones that are private and not open source. People could take open source code and edit it and run it themselves. So even if there were a law, again, that said that open source code has to have this watermark, you can edit open source code. That's the nature of open source. And so they could just remove the watermark. And so bad actors who don't care about the law, again, could just remove the watermark and then generate content with these super high performing models that are as good as all the other models that exist without the watermark. So it is a fundamental issue that these companies have to choose to put it in their models rather than us just being able to tell from the outside. And so it's great that this technology exists. We still aren't able to tell if a piece of content is AI generated or not. So I hope this helps and let me know in the comments what you think, if you have any questions, if you think that it should be government mandated, even if people could get around it, it doesn't putting in these watermarks and let me know what else you want to learn. Thanks for being here and I will see you next time.